Welcome back to the Sydney Football Stadium. A good crowd is on hand. It's not overly large. It's probably around about the 30,000 mark. Temperatures probably around about the 18, 19 degrees. The breeze coming strongly out of the east, northwest, or northeast, I should say. Mostly cloudy day, maximum 19. And those winds are gusting at times up to around 30k. Minor grades, Cronulla taking out the 21s, Newcastle the reserve grade. I've got a feeling that's the first grand final that Newcastle have been to. So St George waits for next Sunday to take on the team surviving yet another sudden death final. The preliminaries are all but over. The main event is seven days away. And Rugby League, they know that. The Rugby League fans are waiting with great expectation. Will it be another lap of honour for that team, the Bulldogs? Will it be the Dragons? Or will it be the Broncos? Just waiting for Canterbury now. The breeze is strong, isn't it? Swirling around down there at the headquarters of Rugby League. Canterbury are in the tunnel. And here they come. There's the king, Terry Lamb. He had to make uh, 41 tackles last Sunday. It drained him for attack. His coach has said, take it early, take it easy early on. Followed out by Jared McCracken, and he, of course, has got the job of lining Steve Renoff. More about that later. The crowd welcomes the Bulldogs. Let's check their team now. This is how they look from the back, Scott Wilson. Young Dallas comes back. Connolly McCracken Williams, Lamb Polamounta, Brokenshire, Sadaris Bella, Smith Pay, Dimmick, Chris Anderson, the coach. Martin Bella, Martin Bella started the match very strongly last weekend. He almost exploded into the game and then his game tempered somewhat. To the Brisbane Broncos. Now the defending premiers. They know that the bulk of the crowd will be against them here at the football stadium, but they've been here plenty of times. They're a professional unit, they can handle that. Let's have a look at their side. And one major shock in it, I would imagine. O'Neill at the back, then Hancock, Renoff, Johns, Kahn, Walters, Langer, Gavin Allen's the one I was referring to, Kerrod Walters, Mark Hone, Gilmeister, Can, and Peter Ryan at the back of the scrum. Madison is on the bench. Willie Kahn goes back to the wing. Steve Renoff back after a smashed jaw in jumper number 30. He's wearing an upper and lower mouth guard for extra protection. You can see the bulk of it there harnessed inside that headgear, which also looks like it might have been treated with extra padding. It says plenty about the, the depth of this Brisbane side, doesn't it, to bring Gavin Allen in. Played so well in the State of Origin Series last year, almost an Australian representative. The other choice was Andrew G, who has so represented at the high level. McCallum, the referee. Mick Stone, the boss of referees, was telling us earlier today that McCallum's the number one it's up to Harrigan to displace him. There's the start. At the end of this, one of them won't be coming back. McCracken, 10 metres out from his line. Hone was first man there with Kerrod Walters. And a penalty. The Broncos inside the 10. Connolly just marking the spot. And a shocker. That's gone backwards. Sadar was to take the tap. 20 metres out from his own line. They've played twice this year. They played at Calor Park in the opening round. And Canterbury defeated Brisbane 20 points to 10. 
and then they met at ANZ Stadium with Brisbane giving Canterbury a lesson 38 points to 80 and Steve Renoff has scored a total of six tries in those two games great front on defense there Gavin Allen involved and that'll be his role out there as Sadaris gets out of dummy half met by Kerry Wallace who bust himself for this first 15 or 20 minutes Allen then we'll see G into the game Polamata Dimmick angling back into the right and crossing the halfway line this is the last coming up for the blue and white side Terry Lamb kick will go over the dead ball line back now for the 20 meter tap Breeze, as I've told you, is gusting at around 30, 30 knots out of the east, northeast. But when it gets down in this saucer-like um, coliseum, if you, if you like that expression, it does funny things. It swirls around. So just who's got the advantage of it? I'm not sure, although possibly it's with Canterbury. Alan Can, grand final hero last year near the 40 meter line and the broncos now with their first set of six tackles gilmeister cut down by brokenshire in eight sadaris in nine left for langer he just waits it over the head of brett dallas and that breeze got behind it pushed it over the line 25 out and, and brokenshire Mark, uh, has been opened up yeah both sides testing each other out in these early stages both sides have got good hitters in their packs as gavin hill prepares to come on They've got Dean Pay and Brokens here on the Canterbury side. Gilmeister, Can, and Gavin, Gavin Allen now. There's plenty of uh, big defence out there. Greg McCallum just advising Brokenshire that it is a blood bin. You're not allowed to leave the field until the referee indicates that. And plenty of blood coming from a scalp wound. He may have got... A boot in the head he went low on Gilmeister and Gilmeister lashed out and I think you'll find that's what's happened a sprig has probably got him on the top of the head Gary Connolly's pulled down by Renoff and I I guess Peter Sterling that Renoff the first thing he needed to do was be tackled or make a tackle exactly right get involved in the game as quickly as he can Bella tries to get one out the back it'll be cleaned up fortunately for Canterbury by well, eventually, Sedaris, it'll be a knock-on in there, so a Brisbane feed, sloppy play. But that's exactly right. Renoff had to get in and make sure that the first 10 minutes wasn't spent away from where the action was. Bella trying to offload. There's plenty of Brisbane defence there. You know, and, Peter, that's not his job. I and mean, his job is to get those 10 metres and, and get up and quick play the ball. And all of a sudden, he thinks he's Arthur Beats. Nearly the same build. <laughs> Kevin Walters now just outside the 40 metre line. Alan Can is running freely. Polamounder's underneath him, picks him up too. Strong tackle by Craig Polamounder, although I'm not sure that's his job. Turned inside by Walters. Johns almost through. Dimmick had him. Now Langer gets an awful pass. Left him open to the heavy defence of Bella. Kerrod Walters turns it. Mark Home takes it up the centre. That's Gavin Allen. This is Trevor Gilmeister. Now Kevin Walters. Now it's Steve Renoff. Oh! Did I tell you? He scored six tries. Make it seven against the Dogs. Well, he's Renoff only... gets a try. They wanted him involved early, Ray, and that's exactly what he is. And it was just great work from Brisbane, keeping the ball alive. You'll see Terry Lamb's a man caught out here. We'll have a look at this. Play back the blind. We freeze it there. There's Terry Lamb. He's come in there. Now, the pass from Marcone, who's not renowned for getting pass away, catches Lamb out. There you see he had to turn and chase. That put them at sixes and sevens. Then it was just a simple crisscross. He had a little bit of work to do, Renoff. Got in behind Kevin Wilders. Again, through Terry Lamb there. And that justifies his selection already in this side as if it ever needed to be justified. And look at this second phase play by Kevin Walters, who was hanging around, not doing much. Saw the opportunity to back up. And then Steve Renoff beat a couple of feeble attempts. But there I thought the, the Canterbury markers really erred. Both of them went the same way early. And that created the, the uh, space down the blind. An aspect of his play there, Paul, the fend at the end. Wayne Bennett has been quoted as saying that he, he's, like, he is a strong man, but the timing of the fend is, is as good as any player in the game and evidence there just pushed brushed Terry Lamb away 
Like a great start for Brisbane. We wanted, or we expected, Canterbury to, to try and get that kind of start. Yeah, it great. Worked. Yeah, tremendous start. Let's not forget Gavin Allen. He, he showed great they had great skills and he went to the tackle, offloaded the ball around the corner. He hasn't played since the second round of the Premiership in first grade. Got a great confidence booster, no doubt, for Steve Renoff. Julian O'Neill. He's got the win to contend with from right out on the sideline. Well, I suppose, Ray, last week Canterbury made mistakes and Saints made them pay. It's happened again here with Martin Bella trying to offload probably when he shouldn't have. And five tackles later, Brisbane over in the corner. Seven tries for Renoff against uh, Canterbury. Four in the second round, two in the first round. And he's back from the broken jaw five weeks down the track and gets a try. Here's the conversion attempt. Oh, Julian O'Neill! From the sideline, a beauty. Brisbane 6, Canterbury no score. Gavin Hill. Punching it down for Khan to come back. 6-0. Six minutes gone. Gavin Allen. Try for Renoff. Converted from the sideline by Julian O'Neill. This is Alan Can out on the 30 metre line. Hone. Gilmeister, short passing by the forwards. Allen. Bumps a couple away. Langer now. Close to the halfway line. O'Neill. Darren Smith went in for the charge down. Scott Wilson positioned himself. And now the Bulldogs fullback goes back to meet the defence. They're going to catch Canterbury out on the sixth tackle, Brisbane. Sometime in this game by throwing the football. On that occasion, there are a lot of numbers out there. The Brisbane players had, had gone through early. They seem to be very short in numbers, Canterbury, on the last. Almost over-reading the kick. Brett Dallas. This is Dimmock, or is it Pay? It was the latter. Polamounta. Renoff over the top of him. They're about five metres into Broncos territory. Dimmock carries the attacking raid on. Good work by Dimmock. Short pass, Darren Smith. And Dean Pay puts Darren cracking into a gap well the last pass has gone wrong Scott Wilson tackled 20 meters out six to go Reds Darren Smith long pass for Terry Lamb they've got two on one Dallas put down five meters out no panic from Brisbane Connolly Sedaris pull him out there. Beats Renoff, taken by Alan Can. Brisbane scrambling. Lamb got a bad pass. Dimmock, short pass, pay. Terry Lamb, Jim Dimmock. Dimmock's over the line. Has he got it down? It looks like a try. It is. Jim Dimmock gets a try for Canterbury. And the Bulldogs strike back in the best possible fashion. Some great play. They've run come 100 metres in those movements. Some great interchange of passing here. This is where it all started. Nice ball here by Dean Pay. Look at this, the dummy. Lovely short ball to McCracken. This is a great tackle by Kevin Walters. But from there, it was six more. And the Brisbane defence scrambled. But in the end, couldn't hang on. Alan Langer produced a couple of good tackles. But Dimmick went through plenty of traffic and plenty of strength to get the ball down. Yeah, the speed of the play the ball was the key for Canterbury there. You see Langer couldn't get out of marker in time, and Dimmick, as Paul points out, had plenty of work to do, but there's the ball being put down there. I've also got to give Peter Ryan a wrap for Brisbane earlier in the play to come up with a try saver on Brett Dallas. But there you see the joy for Canterbury. He's a key man out there this afternoon, Jim Dimmick. He must take some pressure off the two halfbacks. In the preceding... 12 tackles leading to the try. I think you'll find Dimmick handled 
three times, including when he put it down. Well, he was a star player in the try. 6-4 down Canterbury. Will they be equal? Yes, they will. Six points all, Gene Miles, and Canterbury have struck back. Yeah, they have, right. And that, those are the three guys that were criticised after last week's defeat. Uh, Terry Lamb, Polo Manor, and also Jim Dimmick. And so far, we've seen Polo Manor make a couple of clean breaks. Terry Lamb heavily involved, and of course, Jim Dimmick going over for the try. Back on the halfway line. The in goal judge got plenty of help there, anyway. The decision. Will he come? Oh, it's gone out on the full. Penalty at the centre of the halfway goes to Canterbury. A very ordinary mistake there from Willie Kahn. You've, you've got to keep those in. What it's done now, obviously, is given away about 60 or 70 metres. Field position is going to be enjoyed here by Canterbury with a good kick from Gary Connolly, only 25 metres out. There was no lack of effort from Gary Connolly. He knew he had to find the line and he fell... Straight over after kicking it, he gave it everything he had. Now they work a wide blindside. Darren Smith has tackled 10 metres away from the Brisbane line. Dimmick again. Five metres out. Six points all. This is the final. Polamounta. Wrestled by Kerrod Walters. Alan Can gives some assistance. Sedaris away, left for Wilson, on for Lamb, out for Connolly, inside McCracken. Ten metres out from the line, that's tackle five. Now Terry Lamb runs the open side, puts the kick in, Hancock underneath it, out to the 20 metre line. There's a nice tactic, tactic there by Terry Lamb, but unfortunately, I don't think too many Canary players knew about it because uh, he didn't get much support out there, and Mick Hancock had took it very easily. I think if he had another kick, Paul, it would have gone a lot higher than that one. All the pressure off now as Peter Ryan gets one away. Again, Brisbane Cooper. Oh, tackle there. Gary Conley on Alan Cairn. Play on, says referee McCallum. Conley. I can't believe that. That's that from a mistake. Now, a bit of push and shove. And Gary Connolly is the man down. How about this from Carrot Wallers into the back of Peter Ryan. He's offside. Then he throws the ball away and the referee calls play on. Why not a penalty for the offside, Paul? Any... Exactly. Should have been uh, a kick right in front of the sticks. Here's the incident there. There's a big swinging arm by Alan Cairn. I don't think he really connected flush with Conley, but it's hurt him anyway. Blocker, you predicted a physical start last week. Maybe a, a week a week off. It might have been a week too early. This one's do or die. A little bit of news on Mark Brokenshire. He's received 14 stitches in a head wound, but he'll be back. He's a tough hombre, uh, Mark Brokenshire. It's a very hard rule to comprehend, the one that uh, Peter and Paul were talking about. In fact, Kerrod Walters found himself the, the subject of accidental offside. And providing the non-offending side is not disadvantaged by it, the referee is empowered to play on. In this case, it seems like a, a tough ruling on Canterbury because they really should have got a kick to most people's minds right in front for two points. Well, he's played at the ball there, Kerrod Wallace, knowing he's offside, hasn't he, Ray? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. He's accidental offside because the ball's rebounded off a player that did not play at the ball. So that's what he's used. Referee McCallum has used the... The ruling of a player in an accidental offside position. Gavin Hill now gets the kick that most people thought they should have got from the previous play. And steers it just wide. Six points all. Canterbury and Brisbane in the final. Just getting back to that, I agree with both Peter and Paul. Two points. One would have thought was the best advantage to give the non-offending side in that situation. Gavin Hill. He's 
on the field for Mark Brokenshire, who uh, has a nasty gash in the top of the head after a very early tackle in the game. He'll be back, no doubt about that. This is Darren Smith, very strong in the opening attack. That's Hill again. This is the last now for Lamb. He's driving the ship. Hancock had to fall back quickly. Lamb put the chase on. Hancock beat Lamb, but he was wrapped up by Dimmock. Very keen defence by Canterbury. Gilmeister. This is what Canterbury want to do off kicks. They want to get Brisbane down into the corners and make it difficult for them to get out. That's three tackles. They're not 20 metres out from their own line. They'll be forced to kick from well in their own territory. Gavin Allen. This is Ken. That's the beauty of Brisbane, though, Peter. They're a side, sure, they love to throw the football around, but like now, and you talked about them catching out, they've caught them out here. Renoff combining with Hancock, who does some dancing. He's going to give a penalty. Obstruction. I'd like to see it again. My first reaction was that the defence wasn't there to be obstructed. Let's have a look at it. Let's see if a player was actually... by this play was... Yes, there was. Gavin Hill, dead set. with that shepherding rule or the obstruction rule the the, the defense must be obstructed if it's non-existent the referee will rule play on rocket shoes back on for canterbury center field 20 out great chance here for them i think gavin allen's left the field as well has he not pull him out of through to lamb he dummied on the inside floated the pass out over the sideline in front of jason williams well, the idea was OK because it looked like Williams was on the outside of his opposite man in Khan. With this ball just uh, going astray. Khan probably had him covered anyway. I was going to make the point before the Brisbane are a side who can be patient with the ball and they are prepared to do the hard work as well through the forwards. Team Miles, this has been exactly the opposite to the start I expected. I thought that Canterbury needed to get first points on the board. Brisbane have done that, but Canterbury have come back very strongly. Yeah, it's been a, a worry for the Wayne Bennett side in uh, previous matches gone by this year that um, once the Brisbane side score, they seem to just drop off intensity and let the opposition back in. Carrot Walters. Lang up. Johns beautifully read by Williams, the winger. Right. Plenty of Canterbury jumpers wanting to make tackles. Julian O'Neill, straight down to Brett Dallas, he's played at the ball, oh and Hancock is away, Hancock, he scores, well, how would Brett Dallas be feeling right now, Michael Hancock scores a freakish try. Well Brett Dallas, he had no luck, he got a very cruel bounce, we saw him do the same thing in State of Origin a few months ago where he decided to put the feet out for the ball rather than try and catch it, look at this. It went nowhere, and Mickey Hancock came from nowhere to pick it up, and away he went. But Hancock, full marks to him, kept on the charge and put the pressure on. Yes, he's proven to be a great opportunist. Michael Hancock scored the first against Canberra from a mistake out there. And Brett Dallas, he was between the devil and the, the deep blue sea, wasn't he? He didn't know whether to try and go and catch it on the full, let the ball go. In the end, he got a hand to it and then lost sight of it. He didn't realise where the ball had gone. And that meant his reaction time was a little bit slower and he was on the fly, Michael Hancock. Darren Smith just going over and trying to encourage the youngster. So does Jason Williams. Well, it's all you can do to him, try and pep him up. I mean, it was just such a cruel bounce. I don't think any player would have got there on the full. He did the best thing he could. Well, that's exactly right. He did what the manual, the coaching manual, would tell you to do. And the bounce of the ball just uh, gave him no help at all. It's as simple as that. There's Julian O'Neill from a wide angle. 22 metres out. Pretty much the same angle as the conversion earlier of the Renoff try. 
Gets it away, it's coming around, hits the uprights and bounces away. Ten points to six after 20 minutes in favour of the Broncos. Two tries to one. Brisbane over Canterbury, 10 points to six. Khan. Second tackle on the set of six. Home. With this 10 metre rule, you can almost tell what time is on the clock. Without looking at the clock, if I can explain it that way, players are able to make much more yardage. Dummy halves and first receivers running more conspicuously as the time starts to grind away. We're just over a quarter of the way through this final. Charge down, well, it wasn't really. It's come off the legs of Darren Smith. It'll be a loose head and feed for the Broncos, 32 metres out from their own line. That's Darren the way, Smith was uh, the Canterbury player. The way luck can go against you, Ray, if that had have gone anywhere in the field of play. Darren Smith, as you can see there, leading the charge by a long way. Incredibly amount of tries scored in the game of rugby league from kicks. A couple last week, already one today. Chances are we'll see another. Johns. Big dummy, and a couple of Canterbury players bought it. Andrew G playing in jumper number 27. And the penalty goes to the Broncos. That's for pulling the tackled player back down. And Brisbane are making good yards when they put a couple of passes together. Uh, one forward to another. Just gets a little bit wider of the rucks. And the defence just expecting these days players to run one out with no support. But when Brisbane do put a couple of passes together, they're making very good yards. Kerrod Walters taking the tap. Andrew G is the first player up. Home pulled down by Pay. That hurt Dean Pay, the tackler. Langer's pass, a short one for Alan Cam. Five metres out from the line. Brisbane set to attack on both sides. Langer. Back for Mark Hone. Oh, great tackle! McCracken got him with a pearl. Kerrod Walters, Alan Langer, Kevin Walters. Out the back for Chris Johns. Ten metres out from the line. Five tackles. Langer, will he use the kick? Little chip out for the uh, Willie Kahn. Kahn goes high. So does Canterbury. Line drop out. Jim McCallum, what's he ruling here? Well, I felt that this came off Kahn. Actually, I thought he might have got his hands to it first. And that he's knocked the ball on there. Yeah, no doubt. Have a look at the replay for mine. We've got another blood bin here. And so Dean Pay, he was hurt in that big hit. Has also been opened up in the head. Jason Williams takes the 20 metre tap. Yes, he's ruled there that Willie Kahn propelled the ball forward. So he's played on the first breach. Martin Bella. He's measured his start today. Use that expression. A sight we didn't follow your earlier comments on his performance last weekend. A sight we didn't expect to see during the final series after the great dislocating a shoulder. Terry Madison is out there in 31. That's him making the tackle front on now. Terry Lamb. A little rubber kick, and Kevin Walters saw it coming. Good anticipation shown by Kevin Walters. Now they go left and go quickly there. Khan. Centre of the ground, about eight metres on their own side of halfway. 
Peter Ryan. That's Madison. Wayne Bennett adopting the attitude that it's now or never because it is a sudden death match. Kevin Walters smothered into the ground by the Canterbury defence, including Jared McCracken. Penalty goes to Brisbane against Canterbury for holding down too long. Big decision on the last tackle there. Cardinal Sin giving away a penalty late in the tackle count. Just back on Terry Madison, I was talking to Kelvin Giles, their conditioner. He said that if Madison was to play in the grand final, he had to get game time this afternoon. And that's what he's doing. Andrew G. Gilmeister. All those passes out of dummy half have been fairly dusty today, and they've put the, put the receiver on the, the worst end of the defence. This is Alan Can. Again, they're 15 metres out from the line, Brisbane. They're leading by 10 points to six. We're 15 minutes from half time. Chris Johns. Langer turns it inside. Played by Renoff. Langer comes from the left to the right, then puts the kick in. I don't think it was part of the plan. Scotty Wilson has pulled down. Scott Wilson. Darren Smith. Canterbury's turn now to ruck it away from their own line. Broken cheer. You saw who was running off him if he was able to unload. The best support player in the game, Terry Lamb. Polamounta through for Dimmick. Wide for Jason Williams. And he's taken by Khan, got it inside for Dimmick. Dimmick wrapped up by Chris Johns. Near the halfway line now for Canterbury. Polamounta stabbing that ball in behind the defence and O'Neill lets it go. The scrum will go down just inside the Brisbane 20-metre line. That's a good ploy, kicking for touch against Brisbane. You don't want to play them in ad-lib football, the broken field play, and the scrum will be set now. It'll be a, an Alan Langer feed, but Canterbury will get their defence set. Twelve and a half minutes to go, and the chance starting to rise for the Bulldogs. Trailing by four. Khan taken in the defence and he, he wasn't able to get past the last line of Brisbane forwards from the scrum. I was going to comment earlier and I thought maybe we were only clutching at straws but McCallum is letting the defensive side come well inside the five from the scrums. The ball's got to be out behind the last line of forwards before you can come inside the five and that's the second time. Notice McCallum has let it go. Kerrod Walters, 40 metres away from the Brisbane line. Langer, Scott Wilson. Ooh, ran into a, an object that he probably would rather not have. It was uh, Steve Renoff's shoulder. Brett Dallas heading for the ground on the shoulder of Gilmeister. Here's the tackle on Wilson. So both Renoff and Madison involved in that tackle, neither of them appearing to have too many worries by their injuries. I think Renoff said it best today in, uh, in the footy show. You get a solid enough smack on the jaw. Oh! Darren Smith! Darren Smith gets it inside! Scott Wilson under the bar! Wilson gets a try! Canterbury come back! Ten points all! Well, this is an amazing try. Darren Smith... He can play in the centres, he can play in the second row. He showed some great footwork here to dance his way through this Brisbane defence. Look at the big hole in there behind the ruck. That's where he was aiming for. A couple of feeble attempts there. And I'm very surprised at the lack of cover here by Brisbane. No one within Kiwi of Scott Wilson. Great try to the Canterbury side. They'll go to the lead. Yeah, it's Peter Ryan who was caught out there. He went into second marker, then started coming back. And he was stepped very easily by Darren Smith, who looked like... He was initially running away from support, 
But he's came back and found Scott Wilson, who again had a man on his shoulder who could have scored the try. Up go the high 10. Darren Smith, he was already cheering before he'd thrown the pass almost. Bad marker defence there. One marker in the second, just caught out completely. Terry Lamb now from right in front. Just a formality. The scoreboard tells the story. 12 points to 10 in favour of Canterbury. Half an hour of the game gone now. Oh, Canterbury striking back again. It's, it's like a game of chess. First one, then the other. Aaron Smith, a big play in that one. Well, Willie Kahn has kicked off, and I notice him limping away from the kickoff. He must have jarred a, a, a knee or an ankle as he took a very big divot. He's okay now. Martin Bella. Broken shear. You both know about big divots. Terry Lamb, Polinata tried to duck under, the ball has gone loose, Madison dives on it. Renault feeds it out the back for Langer. Brisbane's attack becoming rabble-like at the moment. Yeah, there's a few walkers out there for the Broncos' side. Uh, there's plenty of hands on hippers out there. Alan Cairn goes forward in a good run. He needs some support now, he needs another big hit up. 35 out from the line. Look what Canterbury have done quite effectively. Paul is, they've, they've played that umbrella defence. They've got up very quickly on the outside. There's been a lot of inside passing from Brisbane. And the inside work defensively from Canterbury has, has matched that. Here's Langer now. See how quickly Wide they get pass. up here. Julian O'Neill doing some dancing out there. Buckle over. Terry Madison. Brisbane have had it for five and they've gone nowhere. They started on the 35. They're only on the 30. Langer's kick comes off his foot twice. Sadaris gets it back for Scott Wilson. 20 metre line. Canterbury's end of the park. Polamalla. 12-10, Canterbury in front. Darren Smith. Why are you standing up to commentate, Gene? <laughs> just, just a little worried at this stage, Ray. It was mentioned in the dressing room at half time that uh, uh, Wayne Bennett places Jim Sedaris in the Stephen Wallace class at uh, darting out a dummy half. So look for uh, Brisbane to address that problem. Oh, that was heavy stuff there while you were talking. Gilmeister was underneath, and Andrew G over the top, and Mark Brokenshire. He was right in the middle of it. Here's a chance, Terry Lamb, lofted pass, oh, they'll score, McCracken, McCracken, he gets the try, 16 to 10, and the doggies are barking now. And it comes from the kick again, and you've got to feel sorry for Kerrod Walters, who was back in the second line of defence, a little bit like Brett Dallas, had no idea where the ball was, and the kick goes up, let's have a look at Kerrod Walters, the ball come down, he frees it there, that's Kerrod Walters. Ball coming down, he's got no idea where it's going to go, and Terry Lamb crawling through his, on his own kick. What about the pass to set up McCracken? McCracken's involvement has been outstanding. This time it's a try. Yeah, great work by Terry Lamb. He's virtually done it all on his own. He flew up there, Aussie real style to take that, then the foresight to see that McCracken was unmarked out wide. And Canterbury, they're going very, very well. When they've got the ball, they look good. They've cut down the mistake rate. Brisbane's defence isn't as good as it has been the last couple of weeks. And uh, Canterbury, can they shock the Premiers? Steve Roach. Yeah, well, let's not forget if uh, Canterbury go in at half-time with a lead of 18 points to 10, they will have the breeze in the second half. And Terry Lamb has got the experience to keep Brisbane right down in their own try line where they're most ineffective. Sixteen points to ten. Terry Lamb, he's missed it just out to the right. 
16 to 10, five minutes out from half time. Karen Wilders, as Peter pointed out, he was really in no man's land. There was a missile flying around there somewhere, and McCracken put it over the line. Restart of play, and uh, a deep kickoff. Sedaris has put it down behind him. McCracken. Many of the pundits felt that Canterbury, to have any chance, had to get a good start in this game. And they've done that, they've matched Brisbane try for try and now a little bit of frustration coming out in the Brisbane side just dropping off their discipline a fraction Canterbury's penalty in the middle of the 20 meter line Mark Home with just one of those stupid little errors that creep into your game and brought about by frustration or anger Martin Bell popping it out the back Scott Wilson wrapped up by Alan Langer from the right for Sedaris to put Dimmick down that side of the ground. He's to the halfway line. 16 to 10 and three tries to two. A couple of the tries have been freakish, but one apiece for each side. So there's nothing lucky about uh, Canterbury's lead. Brisbane's lucky try was cancelled out, I suppose, by Canterbury. And now Terry Lamb. The hero five seconds ago becomes the villain at the moment. Well, that's a shame for Canterbury because they're on a roll. Their forwards are going great guns. Broken cheer followed up by Biller. And then finally this, Terry Lamb, the pass, the wind took the pass ahead of him. I think both dummy halves are having problems with that, that swirling wind down there. I made the comment earlier that Brisbane's first receiver had got a couple of very ordinary passes. Kerrod Walters does some dancing. Langer pushes it out. Peter Ryan crosses the halfway line that was a desperate tackle by Jason Smith now Alan Langer gets in behind the defense turns the pass away for Kevin Walters 30 meters out and about three minutes of the first half to go Chris John stands in a tackle it's with Peter Ryan he tries to get inside the 20 meter line Peter Ryan to play it Kerrod Walters a dummy half Alan Langer takes it to the defense line and Darren Smith was there to read the kick and, you know, Alan Langer continues to put this ball on the deck, and they, they are 15, 20 metres away from the try line. I mean, I, it's, I think it's a, an ordinary option for Alfie. Take a leaf out of Lamb's book, put it up in the air. I also think, Paul, that they, they don't have the option of really running the football because the centres are staying split when they've got the football down there. Like Steve Renoff was standing on the other side of the field then with his hands on his hips. He's got to be over here, a decoy or a runner, getting involved. Penalty going here to Canterbury. It's a high tackle on Jim Dimmick. And the offender is Alan Can. Let's have a look at the shot. Dimmick. Well, there's nothing in it. It's high, and of course the penalty has to be given, but in the barometer of malicious uh, play, there's none existent at all. In fact, the driving tackle down below probably made it look a little bit worse than it was. This young man, Darren Smith, has had an impeccable first half. They work the short side. Bella runs into the shoulder of Kerrod Walters. Offloads for Sedaris. Sedaris throws the dummy. He looked inside for Scott Wilson. Now Polo Mounter. Terry Lamb flicking it inside for Jason Smith. Lofted over the top for Gary Connolly. He pushes away and gets the kick in. Gillian O'Neill comes up to take it. Pulled down by the kicker, Conley, and Darren Smith coming in over the top. Ten metres short of halfway. Away from Kevin Walters, they go wide very quickly. And Chris Johns makes the mistake and puts it down. Less than a minute before half-time, played by Sedaris. Darren Smith. The field goal would be handy for the dogs. That may well be what they're working for. Bella takes it angling towards the centre of the ground as though that might be what they're on about. Polamounder is 25 metres out, gets the pass away, but Scott Wilson can't take it. So Brisbane come up with the football. 
Half time, 25 seconds out. Alan Can taken down by Jason Smith and Martin Bella. 30 metres out from the Brisbane line. They spread it wide very quickly. Oh, I'll tell you what. If that finds the target, good night. Well, I was try time. Because Renoff, he would have gone over the 70 metres with no defence at all. Well, Renoff gets on the outside of his man and Connolly. Connolly's not even looking. Renoff, look at the space. They wouldn't have caught him. That's the World Cup combination. So many times Kevin Walters and Steve Renoff have combined. The half-time hooter, Canterbury, leading Brisbane. Three tries to two. Jim Dimmick, Scott Wilson and Jared McCracken the tries. Gavin Hill, one from two. The other goal uh, kicked, uh, the other goal kicked by Terry Lamb for Brisbane. Renoff and Hancock the tries. O'Neill the goal kicker. Is it to be two Sydney sides in the 1993 Grand Final? Welcome back to the Sydney Football Stadium, wherever you're watching around Australia. This is the, the final, the preliminary final, as it's uh, rightly known. And 16 to 10, Canterbury leading Brisbane. There's the, uh, the statistics out of the first half. Yes, an unusual set of statistics, really. The first half was played in two halves. You see there that even though the Broncos have missed more tackles down the bottom, 16 to 12, Canterbury have come up with more handling errors. More line breaks from, from Canterbury. That's surprising, 4 to 1 against the Broncos. And really have to say that the Broncos have probably held the ball better. They've had it 16 times and gone through to the six tackles on 10 occasions. Not as good a conversion rate, 19 to 7 for Canterbury. That's an area that Chris Anderson will be speaking to them about. Work their sets of six. They are in front. Gene, what's... Uh what's been happening down in in that little mites dressing room the brisbane broncos well wayne bennett showed a lot of concern about the, around the ruck defense they said to uh, tighten it up and uh, for julian o'neill to marshal his troops from the back there he has been uh, yelling at the players but they haven't been taking much notice so take attention to julian and uh, we'll probably see um, i know fatty mentioned it in the call that uh, lang has been going on the ground we'll see him go to the air now on the fifth tackle and when he mentioned during the during the uh, telecast that uh, the, the centres were split. Well, that, that's a plan Brisbane are using, and that um, Terry Madison will fill in where, where the other centre should be. Terry Lamb has already left his mark on this game. Not subjected Lamb to the amount of tackling that he was last weekend at this comparative stage. I think last weekend he was 21. He's made uh, nine today. So half as much work in defence for Terry Lamb. Talking of him and Canterbury, what's the news from down there, Steve? Yeah, well, Chris Anderson in the Canterbury room is very happy. He said they're punching plenty of holes in the middle of the ruck against this Brisbane side. Chris Anderson has sensed that the Brisbane players look a bit tired from the mark area. He said that you've got the win in the second half, but don't take that for granted. 40 minutes away from making the, uh, the grand final. And there's just a couple of times they gave silly penalties. He said they'd be a lot further in front if they didn't keep giving Brisbane back the football. Canterbury have uh, broken the Brisbane line four times. Four times. They've been through the defensive cordon of Brisbane. 40 minutes away from one of these sides going into the grand final. Good driving defence by Canterbury in the first onslaught. Andrew G was on the end of it. Now Mark Hone. Brisbane trailing by six and a great tackle by Brokenshire Kerrod Walters running from dummy half very elusive and then he looked around twice and there was nobody supporting him exactly Brisbane support play has been terrible today and there's a mistake made once again that pass from dummy half not a good one Bella put down this is Dean Payne Paul, you mentioned a field goal would have been nice in the last 30 seconds. What about the first three minutes just to psychologically put another nail in? Polamata, Terry Lamb, Jared McCracken. Talking of the Warren Ryan era at uh, Canterbury, 
he often used to start his games with a, a plan, work it down to their uprights, and we'll lead 1-0. One, one Did it quite often, and Terry Lamb, of course, was the master in those days. The bomb taken easily, no pressure. Terry Madison giving it to Alan Can to take it away. We saw Madison working out wide two weekends ago. I'm just wondering if that's going to be the play for him in the second half because it's not so much a case of defending now for Brisbane, it's a case of getting points. Scoring tries hasn't been a problem for them. They've scored about 25% more tries than Canterbury. They've let 25% more tries in against them. Kerrod Walders. Kerrod Walders straight up the middle. Alan Ling is away. The little fellow goes in to score. The Broncos. The walters Langer combination. And Alfie puts it down. 16-14. And again, the speed of the play, the ball. The Marcus, we freeze it there. Let's just have, you've got four Canterbury players there who will not feature in this play, but they're all out of play. As play continues, they can't come in, they're all offside. And then Alan Langer, well, that's very similar to the Darren Smith setup for, for Scott Wilson. And they'll be very disappointed in the Bulldog sheds. Oh, and all of Ipswich just erupted. The boys have put one on, carried on to Alfie. Too easy for Alf. Sensational stuff and a great play of the ball by Mick Hancock. Got that ball rolling. And Kennedy we'd never had time to get back on side. And look at Alfie saying, great work, Kerrod. Or words to that effect. 11th try of the year for the Rothmans medalist for 1992. Put his ears back. And away he went little Alfie, like one of those horses that he probably backed yesterday. The molders bared to the breeze. One of them. Better than plenty. <laughs> 12 metres out for Julian only. One of the young lions of the game. Straight between the sticks. 16 all now at Rugby League headquarters. 43 gone in the final. Well now. Will this game of chess continue? It's your move, and now it's mine. The faces, the faces tell the story. Terry Lamb. This is Willie Carr. Second play. On this set of six for Brisbane. 16 all, turned in by Madison. Gilmeister gallops outside the 30 metre line. Kerrod Walters, eh? Twice he scurried from dummy half in the opening three minutes of the second half. The second time he provided the try for Alan Lane. Well, he's been threatening all the first half. He kept trying and threatening. And finally, the second half, he's come. He's come good with a long break. But Mickey Hancock is in there. He created that first try with a good run. He's in there looking for a lot more work as well. Uh, so you can expect a lot more work from Hancock and possibly Khan on the other wing, Steve Roach. I was speaking to Kerrod Wallace before the game. He's, he thought that uh, Big Marty Bella would get a bit tired in the second half, and it certainly showed then. He waits till they're made into the tackle, three into the tackle, and they wait on the ground. Then he takes off. Good good play from him. And what about his work rate in defence? He's, he's done 27 tackles to date. The, the next closest is Gilmeister and home both on 17. Yeah, I'll tell you what he has done still. Oh, a couple of times, Marty Bale has come charging on the ball, and Kerrod's got no, none of this low tackling around the legs. He's jumped up around his chest and hit him front on. Oh, good play from him. Dean Pay, Darren Smith, Brett Dallas. He got away from Hancock, that'll make him feel better. 30 metres out from their own line, the Dogs. Martin Bell, looking to unload, a good run though by the big fellow. 40 metres out from his line, Lamb puts it through the hands quickly for Dean Pay. Now the last. 
Lamb again. Khan, a long run back. Jason Williams on Willie Khan. Khan just in the field of play. Not a question of where the body is, it's a question of where the ball is. Thorne has been a big swinging arm in this tackle. Yeah, Dean Pay. Nice Khan, good defence by Ken. They nearly got him back in there. There's the ball, it's in play. And in the ensuing ruck, there's been a big look at this by Dean Pay. Cheap shot, not uh, warranted. And he's cost his tide, uh, what, they'll probably cost him 30 or 40 metres here. Silly play from Pay. Julian O'Neill finding the line. 30 metres out now. I know Steve Roach has referred to the breeze being with Canterbury in the second half, but it doesn't seem to be having much of a, an effect on Brisbane's kicking game, nevertheless. It's like a... Not a whirlpool. Whirly geek. That's a washing machine. Oh, I don't know. You know what I mean. the, the way that the stadium is built, it, the, the ball does swirl. Here's Steve Randolph. Randolph, Randolph, down the line. Tunley, Tunley, he beats him, gets the pass inside. It went forward. Oh, I thought Randolph was in again. Well, I'm surprised he, he didn't put the foot down and try and beat the fullback as well. What about that magnificent fend? He's got the change of pace once he got into the open space. It's a lovely ball. That time from Andrew G. This fend on Connolly is as good as you'd want to see anywhere. I thought he might have taken Wilson on. Threw the speculator in. And the try scoring opportunity gone bust for the Broncos. He had some Here's a mistake. Oh no. Swinging arm, is it? Or no, a rake out? the ball. And then the tackle. By Madison on Polamounta. 16 points all. This brought the penalty. Fulmus <laughs> and George K. Brian Smith. Uh, who would you rather play? He said, I don't care as long as these two teams play a draw, an extra 10 minutes each way, and then play it off again on Tuesday. He'll be happy. 16 points all. It's all starting to fall into place as Simon Gilly stands by to come on the into the game. This is Dean Pay as Canterbury work it on only four plays. They've gone something like 55 metres. Martin Bella goes off as Simon Gillies comes on. Action all over the park now. Simon Gillies has only just walked onto the field and he takes this play 25 metres out from the line. Now for Polamata to give to his captain. Scott Wilson probably was in front of the kicker. It's with Julian O'Neill and he's put down in goal. So a line drop out. Good kick and chase by Canterbury. Good tactics. Yeah, good tactics, but uh, I just thought a couple of those Canterbury players might have been offside. And O'Neill couldn't get out of his in goal. So this is a good opportunity now for Canterbury. Here they are now. Now, are they offside? Absolutely not. Well, McCracken is offside. Uh, Wilson, I'm Wilson. sorry. He's definitely offside. But Williams, who comes up with the tackle, not. O'Neill's restart. Kept it low. Jim Dimmick runs it back for Canterbury. Oh, him picked up and put down. It was a softer landing than the takeoff. Dean Pay. 16 points all. 30 minutes. Brokenshire. 30 minutes to go. Pull him out. Lamb, the run around that makes the extras, or should, but Brisbane. Slid in defence to, to leave three on three. Now it's with the Sedaris and Simon Gillies has put away. Sedaris with the headgear on now. Terry Lamb kicks to the open side. Julian O'Neill waits for it and Callum is ordering him over to the to the goal line for the dropout. And that's the second time Julian O'Neill has reacted to Jason Williams. And here's the decision being explained. It's perplexed Martin Bella. That's not a great trick, is it, buddy? Two for two does that. Well, he's ruled that Julian O'Neill had his feet in the field of play and then jumped back into the end goal. And that's the rule. 
as applied by McCallum. And Julian O'Neill looked at him as if to say, you're joking, but God, if a fullback doesn't know, who does? Well, he's caught Canterbury the... come back on the attack. He's caught the ball in his own in-goal area, hasn't he? Yeah, That's but he left the field of the play. He left the field of play to leap up and take the ball. He landed in the end goal. You're quite right. McCallum's applied the rule. It's no use us arguing about it. Polamounder away for Lamb. Back for McCracken. Oh, I thought the big fella was on his way. The scrum out on the Brisbane 20-metre line. 16 points all. 27 and a half on the clock remaining. Hancock on Dallas. The young fella hangs on. Mark Ho. Gilmeister comes back towards the, uh, the short side. He's reached the 40-metre line. That's O'Neill. Nearly to the halfway. They've come from the 20-metre line. To the halfway as Langer puts it low over into the corner. Scott Wilson goes back fast. He could hear Willie Kahn coming down the ground, I guess. Sedaris. Dallas. Field goal at the moment, a desirable option. I just wonder how long it'll be before it becomes a necessity. McCracken's kick, O'Neill cleans up, McCracken chases, he's beaten. Simon Gillies goes in to make the tackle right on the halfway line. Chris Johns, Langer, Kevin Walders, wide for Renoff. They've come from one side of the ground to the other with four passes. Renoff shut down by Paula Mounter. Hancock brushes from one. Gavin Hill back on the, the park for Canterbury in 41. Kevin Walters, a second man play. Alan Cam able to unload, but Willie Kahn was well marked. Right on the halfway still. Kevin Walters goes for another dummy half scurry. Every time he does, he creates danger for Canterbury. Immediately, he puts them on the back foot. Now the last. Langer to the air. Is there a chase? Gilmeister leads the run. Terry Lamb, magnificent. Scott Wilson, straight up the centre. 35 out from his own line. Now Canterbury's got Brisbane on the back foot. Darren Smith across the ground. 38 out from his own line. The great players in this game have time, and Terry Lamb, he caught that one. He knew there'd be chases coming through, but still had the ability to position a player like Scott Wilson into a gap and take the play another 20 metres downfield. Kevin Hill. They come to the wide short side with Polamounder. That option is still there for them. Plenty of personnel on the right. Lamb works off to the left before they start to bring it back to a stacked blind side. Five gone for the Bulldogs. They've got to play it down in back play. It's McCracken. Polamata goes to the air. It's a shocker. Brett Dallas takes it and creates half an opportunity. Simon Gillies passes, but the referee has said turnover. He might have been lucky that he didn't penalise him, actually. Passing from the ground. Talking of the ground, Gene Miles is sitting on it now. Yeah, Terry Madison just come up with a big hit on Gavin Hill, and I think he's got a few shoulder problems. Uh, John Plath will take his spot at the back of the scrum. You know, just talking about field goals earlier on, Brisbane not really noted as a side that are prepared to go that way. Although I know that Lang have won a, a State of Origin game with the field goal, but have hardly kicked any since coming into the Winfield Cup. I think we've kicked two still, and that was Julian O'Neill. And, uh, you know, I, I think they just back themselves to put the ball out the line. John Plath is the man that played it. 
Kevin Walters. Work at five metres into the opposition territory. This is the last. Langer very deliberately. Oh, chance here! Hancock! Can he unload? He can't. That's the turner. Oh, whoa. What a bounce. He's having an absolute stormer, is Hancock. And this kick was doing nothing but Hancock chasing, 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 and came out with the ball. Unluckily for him, no support. Well, he's already had one freakish bounce today. It led to a try. He might have used up his luck for the afternoon. Gavin Hill. Broken shield. I think the player who has had a great game for Brisbane today, involved in that tackle there, Andrew G, number 27. He came on uh, early in the match after Gavin Allen. As I think Sidaris made a good break, but he's been in everything, G. He's done a lot of work in both attack and defence, and he's led their forward pack well. Mark Hone, big effort for a front rower. Grubber kick by Terry Lamb. Some of the Canterbury players feel that Mark Hone may have knocked on. Wouldn't mind seeing that on the replay if we can. John Plath had a dislocated finger put back in. Chris Johns is put away. Let's have a look at that replay that I was talking about. Mark Hone dives for it. it looked okay to me. There's a groan went up from several of the Canterbury players. Now, Walters does it again. Plath runs back into traffic. Five tackles gone. And they're 45 out. Langer. Holds it back, puts the kick in, regathers, no he doesn't, he puts it down. Well, that was going to be very difficult for Canterbury to defend against. Scott Wilson comes away. Langer, if he picks that up, he's got support all over the place. Simon Gillies, one of the forgotten Canterbury heroes. He was arguably their best player before he broke a leg early in the season. To go a step further, he was their best forward. He broke a leg and it put a big punctuation mark not only in his career, but it, it left a hole in the Canterbury side. Here they are working the angles. And probably through his injury, Dean Pay picked up a regular Canterbury jumper in first grade and he hasn't let them down corner camera shows us Michael Hancock coming away and then being crunched by Brett Dallas Crowd, they loved it Hancock out and away Dallas says to the referee what about the marker just going to watch out if Mick Hancock lashes out in this tackle Darren Smith a he great does. shot he does lash out again Langer Kevy Walters the big dummy, then he tries to push away from Dimmick. That's oh, forward! It was forward. Oh boy, McCallum said no, but Greg was 10 metres down the ground. Oh. Gelmeister. Neil's kick. Dallas lets it go, 23 metres out from the Canterbury line. 16 points all, 20 minutes to go. Let me have a look at this pass, together with you people at home or wherever you are. Let's have a look at this. Kevin Walters, oh, there's no doubt. Not only was it a forward pass, it, it very nearly had to be a penalty for deliberately forward. And it was right in front. And talking of that, McCallum was 10 metres right in front of it down the ground. Just under 20 to go, June, a couple of changes down there, or at least one for Brisbane. I think we've seen someone come no. from the field. Is it Alan Cairn that's come off? Yeah, Alan yeah. Cairn's left the field. And, and uh, Peter Ryan's gone Peter back Ryan on. Peter Ryan take And also, I think the Canterbury Darren Centre has gone in, jumper number 25. The play almost on the halfway. Polo Mounter. Nuggety player, but very strong in the legs. He can push away very quickly. Lamb pushes it out. Dimmick promotes it. Gillies gets it away. Dallas makes a sprint. Beach one. And then he's tackled from behind by Alan Langer. Brisbane going backwards. Canterbury going forward. 
Lamb across to McCracken. The run around the extra man. Sedaris goes for the line and he's put away. Oh, That's just, the turnover. Desperation defence there by Brisbane. Once again, Andrew G was a man who came over and snuffed it out. Canterbury throwing everything at the, the Brisbane side here. Yeah, look at the involvement from Lamb. Throws the pass. Covers plenty of metres to get around and then set up Sedaris on the outside. Great defence there. Julian O'Neill did well also. Not too many people thought the final would be this close. Kevin Walters got it away. Kevin Walters supported. Johns goes through. Just gonna say. I'm sure I saw a bird go skyward then, and there was a little pigeon having an afternoon siesta. Chris Johns put his foot on its tail. Kevin Walters. It's been well marked. Oh, John Plath passes. And Willie Khan, he cleans up, but Darren Smith comes up, or as Jason Williams comes up with the ball. Ball played by Darren Santa. Canterbury comes back with it. Gavin Hill is 40 metres out. I was about to say not too many people thought this game would be so close. It couldn't be any closer. 9-2 to two on, though, was the quote Brisbane. Terry Lamb. Kraken, flat and straight. Lamb has to hurdle the legs of a Bronco through Polamata to Dimmick. The tackle forces the ball out. This is Darren Santa back for his captain. Talking of captain, he's put away by the opposite. 30 metres out from the line. The stretcher, is it? No. I think he's calling to the referee for a stoppage in play. The Brisbane trainer, we've got a problem here. Yeah, that was one of the tackles. I think it's Hancock who, who took... Is it John Platt? Play, 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 yeah, he yeah. took McCracken head on. McCracken actually came back and had a look at him and, and called to the bench that he was in trouble. Well, they got the doctor out there fairly quickly. There's Mc... Oh, the knee, I reckon, or the, the leg. It's... Uh, it fell awkwardly in the tackle. Or it could be the head. <laughs> yeah. Could be the oh, head. I knew it was part of his body. Looks like he's been to an great, abattoir great, and survived. Great. Might have been the leg, might, might have kicked himself in the head. Terry Madison goes back onto the field as we come away from Doctors Casey and Kildare. Oh, it's the elbow, yeah, the elbow from McCracken. Accidentally caught him flush on the top of the head. Accidentally? Could you imagine them operating on you, these two? for an appendix removing to finish up with your tonsils out. Now, worse. Langer. Kevin Walters! Lamb came up out of the line and Walters fended away from him. Oh, that was forward, yes, and McCallum's picked that one up. The ball floating forward off Gilmeister in the pass. So Brisbane now starting to put a few errors together. And Canterbury not out of it. 16 all with 16 to go. <laughs> Scoop. Thank you. And they have shown the handling good, haven't they? Jim Dimmick already had an attempted field goal. So don't be surprised if Lamb on this set works it down into the field goal area. They've had time to organise it and set it up. But the tackling at the moment is very good from Brisbane. That was uh, Gilmeister's tackle. Gillies. They're not out of it, 16 all. No, well, that was that was the, the statement from the learned one. Bella gets it to the centre, 25 out. Polamount is to the right. McCracken is well back. Terry Lamb. Now Darren centre. The last. Plenty of time, there it goes, the shot is on, but it's wide. Brisbane will bring it out to the 20 metre line. I'm surprised they, they waited for the last Canterbury. They were over on the right of the ground. They probably could have gone for it on four, right in the middle. Well, I still think with 15 minutes to go, Ray, you, you've got to play five at trying to score a try. And then the, on the last tackle, if you haven't got over, that's when you'll take the point. But this far out, you've still got to get, I think, the try when it's on, the, on offer. And 
that's five tackles worth. Andrew G. Back, it seemed like a half an hour from the time the tackle was made, but it's play on. Peter Ryan. Kevin Wallace still with plenty of zip in his run. His brother Kerrod turns it back for Alan Langer. Langer tried to beat them himself. I don't know that it's going to be a Brisbane forward that's going to make the bust. Seems to be the little blokes for Brisbane that are causing most of the trouble. That kick is with Scott Wilson, a metre back into the field of play. He ran out of time, Scott. He was having a committee meeting with himself, and he ran out of time. Watch him. He's hoping for it to go over, but it won't. And it comes off his boot, and Hancock just grapples him down to the ground. Connell, taken by Gilmeister. Now, Brisbane want the football. Dimmick on the end of Peter Ryan's tackle. There's been some shoddy play, but my goodness, there's been some good stuff. Pull him out up. Half a break. Langer made the tackle. Sedaris's pass. Scott Wilson. Oh, Mark Hone. Goodness, he's agile for a big man. Now Brisbane... They've got it exactly where they want it. Langer to play it, 28 metres out. Ken. He knows his job is simply to hang on to the football. Karen Walters gives it up for Terry Madison. Peter Ryan is 15 metres out. Will they have a shot? 16 all. Langer pushes it out. Kevin Walters, Julian O'Neill, oh, McCracken's defence. Very good. I think they go now through Langer. Here it is, Langer's back. Has a look at it, gets the kick in. He's got it, Alfie Langer. Alfie Langer's kicked the point. 17-16. I think we can find that's only the second field goal Alfie's ever kicked. It was a wobbly one, but it got over. So they got the point advantage now, Brisbane, but there is still plenty of time. 12 minutes remaining in the match. And there's a mistake by Alfie. Canterbury now get the opportunity. And great urgency from Canterbury. They came back for the quick restart. That caught Brisbane out. And Langer, he just didn't realise the ball was coming upon him as quickly as it did. He knew that it was going dead if he didn't come up with a stop. Unfortunately, there was a knock-on involved in that stop. Now, battle stations for Brisbane, a chance for the Bulldogs. Jim Dimmick, that's one. Polamounta, that's two. Three metres out. Darren Smith, second receiver outside Martin Bella. That's three. Three metres from the line. Lamb is in the centre of the park. Second receiver, here he is. Lamb across. Oh, they've all come in. But so too is the ball carrier. And a knock on by Canterbury. Well, when Jason Williams got that football, it looked like try time. He had no one in front of him. But unfortunately for Canterbury, he was standing still. The ball was a bit high. If he'd have been running onto it, then he scores in the corner. And from there, the ball's gone forward. I can't see why he tried to pass to, to Scott Wilson. He wasn't going back to, to anything that was happening there. So Brisbane leading by a point. The last 10 minutes. Somebody once had a documentary called The Last 10 Minutes, and this match would have slotted nicely into that. Uh, into that category because this is going to be a nail biter. Gilmeister, Kerrod Walders, Langer. They haven't supported like we've seen them in the past, Brisbane today. Hone has had another big game for Brisbane. 
the biggest play in this afternoon might be Mark Haynes' charge down to Scott Wilson's kick. Back inside of Wallers, up the middle. Kevin Walters looking for the support. Turns it back for his brother, Kerrod. Outside for Willie Kahn. 30 metres out from the line. Now for Langer. O'Neill going down the ground fast. Scott Wilson coming back equally as fast. He's around them. Scotty Wilson. Holmes chasing. So did O'Neill. And O'Neill brings him down. Oh, that was a wonderful piece of work by O'Neill who caught Wilson. He gave him 15 metres and caught him. Lamb draws them and gets it away at the last moment. Connolly is with the ball. Now Dallas. 35 metres from the Brisbane line. One point the difference, Brisbane in front. Darren Smith. Sedaris for Lamb. On and away from Polamata for Bella. Gilmeister underneath. Langer was up the top and he's on his haunches, Langer. Dimmick out for Simon Gillies and now Darren Smith for Brett Dallas. Dallas put away 10 metres out. Langer getting back into the line now. This is the last. Terry Lamb sweeps it for Gary Connolly. The equaliser goes amiss. Khan brings it back. Piles on the power. Away from Connolly. More yards to be taken. That he does. Good work by Willie Khan. Kevin Walters. Really coming into his own in the last half of this game. Oh, this could be a penalty. Callum says play on. Jim Dimmick, I thought he might not have lined up in the marker position. Gilmeister. Near the halfway line. 17, 16. And seven and a half minutes to go. Alan Cairn. Lang. Scott Wilson. A fairly long run. Away from his uprights. That's the 20 metre line, but it's the wrong end of the park for Canterbury. This is Williams. Alfie Lang is getting some treatment in the back play. That would be a result of a tackle he made on Martin Bella, which I called to you earlier. Talking of Bella, this is him. 38 metres out from his own line. Darren Smith. Langer used the legs in that tackle. Darren Smith I thought he was uh, I thought he was injured, but he's all right. L Lamb realizes the fullback is deep. Lamb gets the bounce, gives it away for Demick. He turns the pass back. Lamb is there. Brisbane are there as well. Picked up by Palomelda, knocked on by the halfback, and McCallum says play on. Oh, unbelievable! Great tackle, Julian O'Neill. Maybe Terry Lamb passed a touch early, but he had support there. And what desperation from Lamb to keep that ball alive. Almost crawling back to try and get it back to a teammate. Big space there in behind the Brisbane line. Probably should have drawn O'Neill a little bit better. And look at Lamb come back to try and keep it going. Great work. Julian O'Neill, he'll be put to plenty of tests in rugby league. Not too many of them will be greater than that one. Hone punches Canterbury as he gets it out to the 40-metre line. 17-16, Brisbane in front. Three tries apiece, five and a half minutes to go, and there's a penalty to Brisbane. Yes, a penalty. Gary Connolly laying on the ground in the play of the ball. Watch him just grab Kerrod on the foot. Somebody was telling me Canterbury was 7-1 to one to win the grand final going into today. Those that took it, they've given them a big sight. You'd like to have 7-1 to one in a two-horse race next Sunday, wouldn't you? Madison, 28 metres out from the Canterbury line in Brisbane, putting another attacking wave together. Kerrod Walders out wide for Alan Can. Can beats Sam. Um, he beats centre, goes inside the 10 and the 5. Oh! Somebody stop him! He'll run out of the stadium! Alan Cam gets, gets a try! That's it! 
Brisbane are in the grand final. Someone stopping him up with a tank. The juggernaut of Alan Can. Sensational stuff. Does he love scoring tries here? Kieran Wallace once again got out of dummy half. But he walkers there around the mark area. Now look, 30 metre run. He's beaten one. He puts the power on, beats a couple there. And Scotty will play. Oh, knocks them all out. Genius. Uh, ten pin bowling there. Great step to beat Simon Gillies. And again, it was Kerrig Wallace keeping things alive. This man has got tremendous evasion for a nuggety forward. Terry Lamb and Scott Wilson just well, they couldn't get him down. They were tied. He can score a try at the football stadium at the right end of the season. Yeah, that try. one might take him through. Well, it will. That's one of the best tries. I mean, only 30 metres, but sensational for a second rower. He's not the quickest, he's not the biggest, he's not the most powerful, but determination, that's all they've got in there. Six tries for the year. He scored two tries in the grand final last year, Alan Can. And this was the try. He beat centre. Yeah. That's the 20 metre line. He beat, or got inside Connolly, I wouldn't say he beat him. Wilson and Lamb and the try. Three and a half minutes from full time. And Julian O'Neill, let's not forget what he's done. He's pulled off two try saving tackles in the last 10 minutes. The try reminded me of a, a rampaging Les Boyd at his best seller. He ran over plenty of people. I don't know whether Les ever scored one as important as that one. But it was a magnificent effort. He's covered 25 metres. And there was nothing on. Gillian O'Neill raises the flags, just extinguishing any slight chance that Canterbury may have had. 23 points to 16. 77 minutes gone, this is the final. An exhausted Gillian O'Neill. And why wouldn't he be? Mark Brokenshire, heavily gashed in the, the opening minutes. Terry Lamb uses the shallow restart. The bounce eventually comes down favourable. And Brisbane in possession. Played by Gilmeister. Bound for Penrith next year. Khan. Madison. Coach Bennett will be delighted, I imagine, with Madison and Renoff who have come through there. He turns to the game, both of them seemingly unscathed. I guess from Chris Anderson's point of view, Ray, similar to last week, he'll be very, very happy with the effort that the side has put in. Execution has let them down at times. Scott Wilson will keep this in with a minute and a half to go. They've, they've had a great year, minor premiers. We will not be seeing them in the grand final. Darren Smith. Good struggling run. Brett Dallas gets away from another. will be a penalty for Canterbury. Referee McCallum rules that it was raked out in the tackle. Thirty seconds of the final remain. Lamb floating it out wide. That's Simon Gillings with it. This scrum will barely have time to pack. Been a great year for Canterbury. They bow out, bow out today. But uh, Chris Anderson has proven he's a top-line coach. There's a lot of uh, talent to work with there in the next couple of years. And we'll see them as regular semi-final aspirants, uh, I'd say, over the next few years. The last play of the day. The crowd counts it out. Scott Wilson takes the last tackle, and that's the end of the preliminary final. That's the end of the preliminaries, because next Sunday, it's the main event.
St George to play Brisbane with the Broncos 23 defeating Canterbury 16 today. Renoff, Hancock, Wanger, Can. They scored the tries. O'Neill kicked three from four. And Wanger kicked a drop goal for Canterbury. Dimmick, Scott Wilson and McCracken scored the tries. Gavin Hill got one from two. And Terry Lamb, one from two. So 23-16 in favour of Brisbane over Canterbury. And so will Brisbane retain their crown? The grand final... A repeat of last year. St George, have they improved sufficiently to beat Brisbane? Time will tell. The countdown is on.